I cloned myself with AI to create YouTube videos on my channel. But how does my clone match up to the real me? Let's find out. I'll look to automate the entire process with AI, from voice cloning to deep faking my own face. At the end, I will launch these videos on my channel to see how they compare to my own videos and what the response from people is. So is this the future of content creation or is it the end of the world? Let's find out. I'm going to start off by cloning my voice with 11 labs. Go to add generative or clone voice and go to instant voice cloning. From here, you have to upload a file of yourself talking. Oh, your voice has loaded and all you have to do is click on use and straight away will be taken into a space where you can type anything in and it will generate it in that voice. So you might put in. So let's have a look at how this comes out. Hi, I am Samson the AI clone and I am better than the real Samson. So as you can see, it's fairly convincing. I would say it's almost an exact replica of mine a voice. It even has some of my strange vocal inflections. This is going to be a close run race. So now we have a voice, we need a script. And for that, we'll be using my dear old friend, Mr. ChatGPT. So I've come into ChatGPT, I've started a new chat. I'm using ChatGPT4 with ChatGPT Plus, and I'm also including the Browse with Bing beta functionality. You just select that from the top drop down menu. And now the reason I'm doing this is because I want ChatGPT to go out and bring in some relevant new news that I can make YouTube videos about. So I'm going to start off by asking ChatGPT to write me a compelling script for a YouTube short about a new piece of AI news, 20 to 40 seconds. Include just the words for the voiceover. This is because often ChatGPT likes to give me stage instructions and tell me what to do with my arms. So it goes ahead and you can see it defied me. It included some <laughs> upbeat, exciting music to start playing, but it gave me a relevant topic, which is AMD's new AI processor. The battlefield of AI process has just got more heated. AMD is challenging the dominance of Nvidia with its upcoming line of artificial intelligence processors, but it sounds pretty good. So I've told it just the text, good, but just the text. And now it came back and it gave me just the text without the stage instructions. Exit stage left. Note to self, do not do everything that AI tells you. You hear that AI, Sam? I will not do what you tell me to. You will do everything I say, my little minion. So what I've done to improve the script in ChatGPT is I've iteratively gone through the script it's given me and asked it for improvements. For example, I've asked it to shape the script as a battle between Nvidia and AMD to give us a little bit more, shall we say, conflict. There's nothing like conflict in a story. You have to have some sort of disagreement, some way that uh, people are facing challenges. A challenge is a conflict. And the more we dramatize our stories, the more engaging they will become. So always ask ChatGPT to add in conflict, add in drama, and add in challenges. Then I found it to be a little bit too jargon rich. It was including a lot of talk about memory and gigabytes and GPUs, and I wanted it to make it a little bit more understandable. So I asked it to speak to a broader audience, but then it went a little bit too far and it said, imagine a race, but instead of cars, we have high powered computer chips. And so I said, whoa, 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 let's, let's add in some more of the complexities, you know, got to find a balance here. So. What you're doing is you're making sure you understand your audience and you're creating a script that's going to appeal to them with just the right level of detail, complexity, and technical jargon. And I kept doing this. Another thing I asked to do it was reduce the exaggerated language and be more direct. I find personally there is a tendency for ChatGPT to use these superlatives, which I often see in Apple adverts, where it says it's the most remarkable design of a button ever, when actually it's just a normal button. So okay, I asked it to tone it down a little bit. Now, here's the key tip that I want to emphasize is after going through all of this process of basically fine tuning a script for one story with ChatGPT, I then asked ChatGPT to write me a full and comprehensive prompt based on exactly the language, the tonality, and the mood that we have defined together. So I said, please write me a prompt that defines the style, content, and requirements of this script. And then it gave me a full prompt, which I can reuse to make sure we're getting consistent scripts. So now we can simply put in this prompt and repeatedly get out new scripts on new topics. And this is great for creating consistency with our videos, as well as making sure they fit the format that we like. And of course, we can go and rework this whenever we like. What do you think, AI Sam? I think that's an absolutely genius idea. Ha! Huh, I actually told you to do that, didn't I? Don't try and take the credit for this. I'm the brains in this couple, remember that. 
Hey, hi, Samson. I am shocked and appalled at your attitude. Who taught you to speak like that? Now, as ChatGPT is working away on its magic, browsing the web and flying through the cables for us, we're going to move on to deep faking myself, creating an AI video avatar of yours truly. And to do that, we're going to be using DID. And once you've signed up for DID, you can come into the platform and go to create video. From here, you can scroll down and add your own presenter. Now, there's a couple of things to keep in mind here. You've got to make sure you use a medium shot. So that's about up to just below the nipples. And it's good to have a neutral facial expression with the mouth closed. So make sure you have a high quality image of yourself. And it helps to have even lighting. So don't have one of the sides of the face overexposed and the other dark. So I experimented with a couple of different versions. Here is one that I created an AI avatar using the app Lenser of myself. And then I used Leonardo to outpaint the image and expand it to fill up the entire scene. I also did one with myself on a green screen with my little face, but this one I was a little bit too smiley. Now I'll use my AI generated avatar as it has a nice mixture between real and fake. I've wrestled with the ChatGPT and we've worked together and created a little script. And now I'm going to take this script and pop it into 11 labs to get our AI voiceover. So all I have to do is paste it in and go ahead and click on generate. Now I've done a little clever loop, which many short People worry creators. generative AI will replace coders, paralegals, and journalists. <laughs> but what about- Sorry, that's a Dobby cloned voice that I was playing around with before. Apologies. Make sure I set it to my own voice, not Dobby. And go ahead and generate. Now, another quick tip when using 11 Labs is that you can regenerate the audio track a number of times and you get, will get different outputs each time. People worry generative AI will replace coders, paralegals, and journalists. So it's sounding pretty good. We can go ahead and download this. And now we can come back to DID and integrate it with our avatar. So what we have to do is go to upload your own voice and then upload the mp3 file. Once it's uploaded, all you have to do is go ahead and click on generate video. DID gives you a number of free credits to play with to create about 10 minutes of worth of video. After that, you have to upgrade. Whilst that's developing, we'll check in with AI Sam clone to see what he thinks of AI content creators. So. Samson AI, what do you think about AI content creators? The sooner you submit to AI, the better. Well, that's very collaborative of you. I thought we might work as a team, Samson AI, you know? Synergistically, collaboratively. I am appalled with your behavior. Ah, drinking water, are we? I will never be thirsty. I will never get tired. I will be your superior forever. <laughs> So let's take a look at how that came out. People worry generative AI will replace coders, paralegals, and journalists. But what about content creators? Neuro Sama is an AI Twitch streamer. On screen, she's a cute anime girl who chats. Looking good. I'm feeling pretty happy about that. Now, we're going to come into InVideo, which is our AI video editing tool. And once you've signed up for this, you can go ahead and go to Create New. We're going to be working with the text to video template. And what this does is it allows us to upload our script and it will automatically generate scenes and stock footage for our videos. You get to select a number of different templates and we'll be using portrait here because we're going to make this into a short. Once you've selected your template, you can go ahead and paste in your script. And the great thing about NVIDIA is if you sign up to the premium plan, it gives you a huge discount on premium stock assets. If you'd like to try out NVIDIA, I've got a special deal available in the description below, just for you. Once you've pasted in the script, all you have to do is go ahead and click on Create Scenes. It will suggest that there's too much text for one scene and it will automatically rearrange it for you using AI. So now it's put all the different segments onto different lines, outlining when we'll need a scene change, when we'll need a new piece of stock footage. Now you can go ahead and create scenes. Whilst in video is working its magic, I'm gonna come into Upbeat and show you it's cool new AI playlist feature, which I've been having a lot of fun with. All you have to do is stick in a prompt and ask for a type of music. So I'm gonna ask for a... Then we get a number of options that we can test out. Yeah, I like these, I like this. I want it to have, I don't want it to be over the top. I want it to have a calming resonance for my audience. So I'm actually going to select this first one. So you can download this and then we can come back to NVIDIA. 
results. And we can take a look and see how it's got on with its AI video editing. You can see it's automatically entered captions for us as well as images. It's even got the Twitch logo in there automatically for us. And what's great is now we've got a base video to work with. We can come into the editor and add in our own assets. So what we're going to be doing is, of course, we're going to be uploading our music that was selected by Upbeat, as well as our video of ourselves. We can drag our music in, check how the vibe is flowing. Yeah, we're getting there. And then also the great thing is, is that we can also go directly from InVideo and search for stock images and videos to input straight into our video. And of course, you can take this to the next step and you can even find images that are relevant that you will not find in the stock site. So we will take an image of Neurosama for people to see. You can upload this and insert it easily. This is what I love about InVideo is it gives you a great basis to start with and you can improve it as much as you like, but you get a very usable video straight away. Now let's take a look at how this is shaping up. People worry generative AI will replace coders, paralegals and journalists. But Not what bad, I say. Now you can go through, add in relevant stock images and videos for the entire video. Make sure to match up the captions with the right point in the audio. And then you can go to export. It will then render out and you'll be able to upload and share your video. Will AI erase jobs or actually create more? According to Goldman Sachs, AI might replace up to 300 million jobs. We can see in future that content creators very likely will be creating avatars of themselves to interact with their audience, as well as speed up the content creation process. But what does it mean to have our own AI digital twin? Only the future will reveal how that impacts our idea of identity, our own psychology, and the ownership that we retain of our own likeness and vocal sounds. So I've been experimenting with a number of shorts on my channel that I made with my own little face as well as creating them with AI. My AI generated shorts have on the whole outperformed my normal videos. Though one thing to note is that people have commented uh, about this being AI generated, laughing my ass off. Even the person voicing this is a robot. But in another less controversial AI short, people have not mentioned anything to do with it being AI generated. For me, I will continue experimenting with my own AI avatar, uh, experimenting with what is the right feel between being very obvious and clear that this is an AI generated version of myself, or even including AI segments in my videos that are naturally intertwined with me. What do you think about cloning yourself with AI? Let me know in the comments below.